You see that, YouTube? We have found the gold standard. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever looked into lower control arm drop brackets, because I know you all have this problem where it's, do I let the stuff hang low and then I get stuck on the rocks, or do I enjoy the most comfortable ride the JL was supposed to have by dropping the geometry and making it lower with drop bracket. So we decided that Terraflex, not good. Very thin metal. And then they don't even come beefed up. You gotta buy support brackets for them. Rough country. Shit. Uh, there were a couple others. Once I found metal cloak, yeah. No, we're gonna put some metal cloak on. I mean, like, uh, bash this on a rock. What's gonna happen to it? It's probably still gonna be gold. And the rock rash is just gonna be a little rock rash on here. Look, look at it. Look at these. Look at these welds. You're not. You're not gonna do better than this. So I opted to just. I'm gonna keep it gold, and we're gonna start buying gold parts because. Yeah, they're expensive, but you know what? You get what you pay for. So what are we putting these on? Well, you know. We're putting them on snazzy. Now, I estimate this is probably gonna take about an hour. So you know, the whole weekend, and we should have this thing knocked out. We'll show you. This isn't a how-to, but maybe we'll throw in some tips and trips along the way. Okay, you definitely should read the directions. I'm not going to say that I didn't read the directions. I didn't read the directions, but you should definitely read them. We started out by loosening the upper and lower control arms on the frame side, and then we dropped them down. Figured out, in order to drop the upper control arm, we had to remove it from the axle side too, and it was just run the bolt out, pick it up, drop it down, run the bolt back in, just because it was hitting the bottom of the mount. But it was an easy fix. And that's this side all apart, plus a bonus Easter egg. Okay, off to the right of this picture, you'll see the skid plate. I did have to drop that in front of that skid plate. No big deal. Then you'll also see on the front of the drop bracket, I reused the upper control arm bolts. Now, I am sure that when I get new metal cloak, shiny gold stuff, that the bolts they supplied with the hardware will fit through there. It wasn't no big deal. I'll even run these factory bolts until I get new upper adjustable control arms. But that was it. I mean, like, you didn't even need a jack to do this project. You could have done it, just everything set on the ground. We jacked it up just to get my fat butt underneath it. But super simple. I can't believe how quick it went together. And then it was off to do the other side. Now, you'll see in this video clip that you'll see the angle. It's not terribly steep on two inches, but you know, once you get three, four, five, six inches of lift, these lower control arms, they just nosedive down. And then you look across now, and with just two inches of lift, you can see how straight everything is again. Just correcting that geometry. And you know what? Gee, they probably know what they're doing. So I'm gonna keep their geometry as long as I possibly can. And hopefully these drop brackets do their job and they last a long time. Now, can we just repeat this on the other side? We're going to drop the lower control arm, drop the upper control arm on the frame side, take the bolt out on the axle side so that we can move the lower control arm below the bracket. We're going to drill out that one hole so the new bolt fits in it, and we can use that new hardware and just a smidge bigger, not much. And I could have put the bolt back up there, but I just, we did it this way because that's the way I did it. And everything went back together. It was a struggle for the child to get everything lined up, but he did it eventually. Oh, yeah. Those are important, they should come this way. Wow, that's the pretty important thing too. It's a shame there's not a creeper you could be just high and dry right now.
was a dangerous one because I could have headbutted something solid. That's just how much of a risk taker I am. Now, I'd say if you have most of the tools to get this job done, you could definitely do it in your driveway. The hardest part was the sleeves that they put up in there to take up the gap where the old control arms used to be, just so everything stays nice and straight. You don't crush the frame when you're tightening stuff. But a little pry bar or a long screwdriver, and you can push those things in where they go. You don't even have to get them wet with a BD-40 or anything. Simple, simple project. And just like that, both sides are together, and it is time to take this thing on a test drive. So, it, went, it didn't take us long at all. All the parts were there. Thank you, Metal Cloak, because we've had some problems in the past where they didn't send all the parts that were supposed to come from other companies, not Metal Cloak. Metal Cloak, you got your stuff together so far. And first feel of driving this thing. Now remember, there's just a two inch lift on the front, just pucks, and the back's got like an inch and a half, and it's a leveling, leveling kit. So I had a caster problem, and the easiest way to fix the caster problem was to buy new lower control arms, but I'm not ready for new lower control arms. Everything's still under warranty. I don't want to put all, a whole bunch of aftermarket stuff on it, but now come January when the factory warranty ends, yeah, then this thing going to go up in the air, but I just wanted these drop brackets because it's like the easiest thing I can do. And I'm going to, I need them anyway, because one day this thing's going to have enough lift that it's going to need either a long arm kit, which I don't want to do, or this mid arm with these drop brackets, which is, I think that's going to ride great down the road. And my initial thought so far is that caster feels like it's gone. I had this slight vibration, even at 30 miles an hour, and I'm doing about 40 miles an hour right now. I had this slight vibration that it just felt like the tire, the mud tires were shot, like the radials in them were shot and, and it just, it, it dove a little bit when I'd step on the brakes, but more so when I put my 35s on, that slight vibration became at 60 miles an hour, you ain't driving this thing. So hopefully we'll get out on the road here where I can crank it up a little bit within limits, you know, not like rough, but, and we'll see what it does. Okay, so there's a really good possibility that the last off-road trip I went on, I may have forgot to put the proper amount of air in the tires. So here I am at the car wash, airing up. Yeah, you know, I can only blame myself for this. It's totally my fault for planning and everything and uh, we're going to promise to do better next time probably not okay so now the burning question the 35s are on it they're at the right air pressure which is kind of a big deal and how does it drive well i don't have any shimmy left in my steering wheel so that's a win the braking, diving, non-existent, and the actual just overall general feel of the handling, it's pretty darn good. 
So I'm excited to continue the upgrades with the special gold product from Metal Cloak. It seems like they got their stuff together. I'll definitely be purchasing some more of it. So thanks for watching everybody. Go anywhere, do anything. Hey, hey, he's back with the creeper now. Look out, everybody. As long as he doesn't roll over his hair, you're about to hit everything. Am I gonna roll over my hair? No. Can you see that? Yeah. We have found... I thought you were talking to me. Darn. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's Lord Kill of Thrivens here with the answer to problems many of you have but don't want to admit. The geometry on your upper front suspension is no good anymore after you lifted it. No bueno, muy bad, not good. And today we have the good stuff. After looking at everybody else's crap, we found metal cloaks, extra good metal for under your Jeep. 